Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, General, for the great work that you're doing. Uh, I had to be in another committee, so please uh, excuse me if you've already addressed this question, but feel free to amplify. Uh, I'd like to ask you about Iran. Uh, as North Korea continues to expand its ballistic missile and nuclear capabilities, it's also been testing newly developed systems, which I think is a real problem. Uh, while the U.S. has arguably shifted focus in the last two to five years to address the threats from North Korea, how would you assess our ability to counter an Iranian threat to U.S. interests in UCOM, including the ability to protect our deployed forces in your area of responsibility? Uh, sir, I'd assess, you know, our capabilities is good. As you know, our, our defense system, particularly our, our air and missile defense system, has as a focus Iran as well. Um, we do, in UCOM, watch closely um, Iranian activity and particularly their malign influence as Israel is a part of UCOM and Iran is, they consider Iran an existential threat to them. And I, one of my responsibilities is to support the defense of Israel. So uh, we work closely with Israel and we keep a very close eye uh, on Iran's capabilities and activities uh, in close coordination with, uh, with CENTCOM. Thank you. And as kind of a follow-on to that, we have Aegis Ashore sites in Romania and Poland. Uh, what are we doing to protect them from cruise missile or other kinds of attacks? So that's, that's addressed among a layered defensive system. I'll, I'll leave it at that and steps that we're taking in that regard. And I'd, I'd prefer to give you that response more fully than that, you know, in a, in a classified document, if I could. Okay, that would certainly work. And uh, lastly, on Asian modernizations, uh, give us an update on the Russian military modernization programs. And, you know, General, uh, excuse me, President Putin talked about these, I think, kind of far-fetched nuclear, uh, nuclear-tipped torpedoes, uh, nuclear-powered cruise missiles, things like that. But... Um, what what are they realistically doing that you're concerned about? Well, they you know they are uh, modernizing their force. So let's go to the you know the conventional and nuclear force first, and just generally in this in this environment, uh, I can talk to you. I, I can provide you a more in depth uh, response in a, in a uh, classified document. But uh, you know it's it's well known that they're um, they are modernizing their conventional force. They're primarily doing that through respect of, uh, with the weapon systems that they put on them, as well as the missiles that, uh, that they've developed that give them greater range, greater precision. And in most of these systems that they employ, uh, they can be either conventional or nuclear. Um, so in many ways, they're, they're improving the ships that they have in the maritime, they're improving the planes that they have, their bombers, um, and uh, and their submarines with advanced systems that uh, that we need to you know we need to to pace and be able to deal with. Um, they're improving their nuclear capability uh, across all their systems and modernizing those. That's why NPR is so important for us uh, to maintain our nuclear deterrent deterrent across the range of uh, scenarios that they might present. Um, Now, the last thing I would note is, is that, you know, they're working hard uh, to modernize both their C-4 systems, you know, their command control communications, and also capabilities in space, uh, and then hypersonics as well. When it comes to the nuclear posture review, I believe that it is a good thing that it's being proposed that we have more options, like lo low-yield uh, weapons or uh, sea-launched intermediate cruise missiles. Some people think that we should have fewer options just as a philosophical matter. Where, where do you come down on the number of options that we sh should or shouldn't have? Oh, I, I support uh, the nuclear posture review that we should close any gaps, that we should have a deterrent that can respond across the spectrum of scenarios that, that they might uh, present us or an adversary might present, present us. Um, I think this designs a tailorable force that does just that, and it doesn't lower the the threshold actually by closing those gaps and, and ensuring they understand that we have a deterrent, a capable posture, that it raises that and it raises that threshold in my in my view. Thank you so much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Mr.